In this video, we will discuss how to calculate latest constant from XRD data using origin. An ideal crystal is an infinitely large and perfectly ordered array. From infinite here, we means few microns. Because we consider the X-ray wavelength, which is of the order of angstrom, so few microns will be in infinite length for X-rays. The atoms are arranged in a perfect manner, and it depends on the direction of X-rays that from which of the plane of atoms it is having reflections. So different planes are existing here. In a powder sample, we are having different orientations of the planes. So it depends in which direction the X-ray is getting its reflection. So different planes are being mentioned with the help of HKL indices, which we call is Miller indices. Here, this plane we call is 100 plane. And the spacing between the two planes we call is interplanar spacing and is represented by DHKL. And in this case, we will have this is D100. Similarly, if we are having the same arrangement of atoms, but the planes which are producing the reflections have different orientations, then we call it a different plane. And it is 110 plane here in this case. And the interplanar spacing is D110 here. This is also to be noted that the interplanar spacing is related to the Miller indices and the latest constant with this relation for a specific type of crystal and this is the case when the latest constant A is not equal to B and is not equal to C which we call is orthorhombic. In Bragg's law of diffraction, we have 2d sin theta equals n lambda where d is the DHKL, the interplanar spacing, and this is over here for a 100 plane like this is the interplanar spacing, while d sin theta is the part difference between the two rays of X rays. As mentioned earlier that the interplanar spacing is equal to the Miller indices and the latest constant by this relation for a specific kind of crystal. If we are having a simple cubic lattice, then we know that all the three sides are equal. So here we will have the A equal to B and equal to C. So I can replace all of these with A and we can take this a square is common and this i can write is that interplanar spacing is equal to the latest constant divided by the square of the miller indices square root if we are having a simple tetragonal then in a tetragonal we know the two sides are equal a is equal to b while the third side is not equal and i can take a square is common so it is h square plus k square and l square by c square when we are having an orthorhombic structure then an orthorhombic structure all the three sides are not equal so the interplanar spacing will be as it is in Bragg's law of diffraction, we are having 2d sine theta equals n lambda. Here in this relation, n is the diffraction order and we usually consider the first order diffraction and we take n equals to 1. Lambda is the X-ray wavelength, which we know from our experimental setup that if we are using the copper source, so it is having wavelength equal to 1.5406 angstrom. D is the interplanar spacing in angstrom. Theta is the Bragg's angle, which we will have to measure in degrees. Now from our XRD data, we will need the value of theta, the Bragg's angle, and then from the value of theta, we will calculate the interplanar spacing by using this relation that DHKL equals lambda over 2 sine theta. And then this DHKL we will utilize here, and we will find the latest constants from this relation. So if I consider the simple cubic structure, 
then we derived the relation the DHKL is equal to this. R from this relation, I can write that A is equal to DHKL H square plus K square L square. And this I will find from the XRD graph, while the HKL values, I will have to take them from the JCPD cards. Now in order to find out the theta values, so I will have to open origin and I will plot the data of LIF. So here is the data. Let me plot this data. And here is the data and I can see that it needs a baseline correction. So I will have to select this one and go to analysis peak and baseline and then the peak analyzer and I will open the dialog. And here I will select subtract baseline, click next and instead of constant I will use the user defined so it is very clear that it will be a perfect baseline correction. I will click next, next and then finish. And it has generated the baseline subtracted data. And let me plot this data. And here it is. So it is baseline corrected now. To focus it more, let me do some changes to the width of it. And here it is. And now I need the peaks position. So I will have to take the data reader tool. And here I see that this peak is located at 38.68 and similarly I will locate all the other peaks. Instead of this, I can also do the annotator tool and I can just annotate the values of these peaks that I will have to utilize in the Excel template. So I can use the zoom tool in order to clearly indicate the peak location. This is the annotator tool and I will click here and then click enter and it will just show the X and Y values here. I can go to the other peaks, just zoom it and then click at the right position. And similarly, I can do some rearrangements to them. And in this way, I will just annotate the other peaks as well. And this is the fourth peak and this is the fifth peak. So I am done with the peaks and I know the location of these peaks. Now let's go to the Excel template in which I have some calculation for the latest constant. I will provide this with the video. And here, this is the experimental value of X-ray wavelength lambda, which is of the order of angstrom. The Miller indices HKL, which I will have to take from the JCPD card, the two theta values. And here, I am just getting theta from it. These are the D spacings. And the formula for using this one is lambda over 2 sine theta. And here, I have written all the values. Note that Excel is calculating the value automatically in radians. So I will have to convert my values first in radians and then when it will calculate in radians. So I will get the value in degrees. And here are the latest constant values. So DHKL I will utilize from here. From the JCPD card, I will have to take the values of HKL and then I will utilize them here. This is the average value of all these interplanar spacing and then when I will calculate the latest constant, so I will have to take the average value. This is from the JCPD card and here I will calculate the percent error. So in order to put the values here, let's go to the origin and just write down all the values. The first peak is 38.68. So I will have to put this value here, 38.68. And then I will 
write the next value and similarly I will write all the peak positions here these are the two theta values so all the values are here now I will double click this one so the theta values are being generated and now I will have to calculate the interplanar spacing so just drag this one and I'm having the interplanar spacing here and now here for the HKL values I will have to go to the JCPD card and with respect to those two theta values I will have to write the values of HKL this is the JCPD card and here I can see that this is lithium fluoride it is having a cubic structure this is the latest constant and here are the two theta values and the HKL values so I can see that all these angles I have written there so I will write their respective HKL values so let me just arrange these two sheets here to write the values easily so this is the very first angle and approximately it is the same similarly this one and the other angles so the very first one is one 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 then two zero zero and similarly I will put the rest of the HKL values so I can now calculate the DHKL values and it has calculated the interplanar spacing and it's in decreasing order and now I will calculate the latest constant and it has calculated the latest constant and this is the average latest constant of all these now I will have to go to the JCPD card and take latest constant value from there so here it is and the latest constant value here is 4.027 let me copy this value to calculate the percent error and just paste this one so 0 0.02 percent error is in our calculations now we calculated the positions of the peaks with the help of annotator tool or the data reader tool we can do it another way when I plot the data and let me do some changes to it and here it is and I do the fitting technique means the peaks and baseline and multiple peak technique I open the dialog and I go with the Gauss function and here I will have to pick the peaks so I will double click each peak and it will just select it I select all the five peaks here and I go to open NL fit and here I have the one iteration and then the fit until converge so I will click this one in order to do all the iterations and it is done here so I click OK as it is fitted here and we are having the fitting of our XRD data so let's go to the data file here and under the NL fit peak 1 we are having peaks positions here 
Under the summary, we are having the XC values and they are here. The fitting has calculated them, so I will have to copy them and just paste them in Excel here for the two theta values. And let's see how much percent error will occur. And now I see that the error is 0.03% now. Now we will consider an orthorhombic structure and we will calculate the latest constants. So let me open this file. This is the XRD of an orthorhombic structure and we can see the different planes are mentioned here. This is the equation which relates the Miller indices and the latest constant with the interplanar spacing. And as in this equation we are having three unknowns. So we will select the set of planes in such a way that we can easily calculate the latest constants. If I look at this plane, this is 0 to 0. So it means that H and L are 0 here and only K is having a value 2. So I will be able to easily calculate the latest constant. While in this plane, 0, double 1, we are having H equal to 0 and K and L are 1. So we have already calculated the B. So we will utilize it to calculate the value of C. While in this plane, this is 2, 1, 0. So L is 0 here and we with the help of the value of B, we will be able to calculate the value of A. So this portion is sufficient for us in order to calculate the latest constant of an orthorhombic structure. So let me zoom it. I will click an empty space here. So it will create a zoom profile. And let me drag this one in order to see this portion. And here it is. So I will concentrate on these three planes here. And now let me zoom this one in order to annotate this peak. Because for the DHKL I will need these values. So I will click and then enter. And it will annotate the value. Similarly, I will do this for the rest of the peaks. And now we are done with this. So let me rearrange these annotations. So we have labeled all the locations of Briggs angle to theta. And now let me start with the Excel template in which I will calculate the latest constant. This one we already discussed for a simple cubic and this is for simple orthorhombic structure. And here the latest constants. Now how we get these values that the latest constants are equal to K, D, H, K, L and all this. So let's go to this calculation. The very first plane is 0 to 0. So for this plane H is 0, K2 and L is 0. And our equation simplifies to this. And finally, we will have that B is equal to K times DHKL here and K is equal to 2. For the latest constant C, now I will consider the other plane. And this plane is 0, 1, 1. So I will simplify the equation. And by putting these parameters, I can write the equation like this. Putting the values of K and L, the equation will become like this. And I can take the LCM. And finally, C is equal to B DHKL divided by B square minus DHKL square square root. And here it is. So I have written this over here and the cell will calculate the value. For the latest constant A, I will go to the plane 210. And in 210 plane, these are the values of HKL. So putting these in the equation will give us this. And finally, A is equal to 2 times of the previous value. And here it is.
now we will start with the hkl values and the very first one i will put 0 to 0 and the location of the peak is 25.99 uh, 0 to 0 and 25.99 and this will calculate theta as well as the DHKL value and the latest constant B here so I can see that this is K times DHKL similarly the next plane is 0 double 1 and the location of it is 24.35 so I will put the values 0 1 1 and it has calculated the latest constant C here I can see that this is actually B times DHKL divided by B square minus DHKL square now to find the last latest constant which is A I go to the plane 210 and the location of it is 31.47 and here it is the theta value and from this the DHKL is calculated as 2.84 and this is the latest constant A in this way we can calculate the latest constant of an orthorhombic structure. Thank you for watching the video.